Okay. Welcome everybody. Thank you very much uh, for joining uh, today. We've got Chloe. This is her first time on the show. Chloe, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. And of course, we've got our resident always there, Darren on the mortgage side, so please. And of course, we've got Pete Wesley, who um, has got his Ford Anglia out again today. And he's gone down and uh, he's on another site. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight across to Pete because I know he's multitasking today. What I want to say is that uh, Langford Tower is a great opportunity to get in at the um, at the right price point in an area that's showing some considerably um, strong signs compared to what you might feel the market is. And I want to just go over that. I'd like you all to understand that the world is not going to end. The property market is showing some real signs of resurgence in certain areas, not in all areas. So, for instance, um, if you look at Sheffield, there was a scheme that came on recently via one of um, uh, Chloe's competitors, and it was sold out in a heartbeat, is the truth of it. Um, so Sheffield, per se, is doing really well. So what are the drivers for that? Well, you've got 54,000 students in, um, in Sheffield. Um, Sheffield Hallam is the largest of the universities. Um, and so when you look at the numbers in this country of people that are going to university, they're still growing exponentially. Um, we, we've had 354,000 um, net migrant gain into this country last year. And of that, 270,000 was students from overseas. Um, so that, that they're providing billions of pounds of income and they're all renting. Interestingly, down in Southampton, and the project I've got to speak to somebody about in a minute, there's a, a brand new tower, which I did bid on. I bid 38 million, it actually went for 38 and a half, which was a little bit too close. Anyway, um, we've got Chinese students uh, going into that block. And typically our block called Centenary Key, we're getting anywhere between um, nine, 900 pound for a one bed and 1,250 for a two bed. There, the, this new block, they're smaller than our apartments. They're going up to 1,600 quid a unit because there's nothing else to rent in, in Hampshire. Now, this is the same right the way across the country. We've got a massive shortage of stock, and this is exactly the same in, in Sheffield, which is why this is such a great opportunity to get in. But I think you all know by now that I use a great piece of software called Nimbus, uh, and Nimbus gives me um, exact figures and one of the toggle buttons they've got on there is what's likely to happen with property prices in the next 12 months. And it's, it's extremely detailed. So, for instance, if I look at certain areas in the country, which will remain nameless at the moment, um, they're showing property prices fall in between 7 and 9% this year. In Sheffield, in the area we are, it's showing gain uh, exactly where we are. I'm talking about to the post, postcode specific. It's showing price, uh, price growth to go up between two and a half and ten percent. However, there's a small area just to the um, uh, sorry, this the left hand side. So going west, um, Bingham Park and Whiteley Wood, and it's only it's less than quarter of a mile from our site. They're showing price increases between ten and twenty five percent growth for uh, 2023. So what what's the drivers of that? There's no stock. It's as simple as that. Construction prices, as we all know, have gone through the roof. And so where you've got a, a site such as this, which is a, a PD rights scheme, permitted development, um, full conversion, firstly, you de-risked it. There's not the development risk to it because the structure's there. So um, the price point on this is also excellent. Um, interestingly, I just took the global average um, within this locality and bear in mind, that I, I don't know if any of you have seen the locality. I'm sure Chloe will fill you in. You're literally right alongside um, um, Waitrose. Um, you, you're within 200 yards of the, um, the central station. Um, you've got St. Mary's Gate Shopping Centre. You've got Aldi's again, which is only a hop and a skip, literally 200 yards away. Um, but you've also got great things like there's a park there with wild flower meadow. Now you might think, well, what's that got to do with property? Well, it has because it means that people want to live in the locality. So you've got great little parks literally within 100 yards. So I don't want to steal all your thunder, Chloe. So I don't think that uh, Chloe's got... Chloe, thanks very much. You don't need to join now. I think Pete's done his job. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Chloe. Pete, whilst you're, Pete, whilst you're there, <laughs> I wanted to just bring up that your Ford Anglia is now 
really, really putting the miles on. In the last couple of weeks, you've been to Nottingham, you've been to Birmingham, I think you've been to Cambridge, you've been down to London, um, you're obviously down the West Coast. What, what are you doing and, and what have you found and what have you seen? So what I'm really I'm I'm really quite excited by the fact that some of the areas we're looking at are showing really good signs of um, continued growth. Now, when when a price goes up as it did over the last twelve months, or even you could say the last thirty six months, you you can't continually have price gains of twelve percent a year. It's not viable. It's not realistic. And uh, because of my age, which is considerable, I know that if you if you strike between 3.5% and 4% per annum every year, and then you amortize that together, doesn't matter what happens, you always end up with a 50% increase in property over a 10 year period, irrespective of what happens. That includes um, the, the crash of 2008. But if you if you put a slide against the, the years that we're involved in property, you're always gonna see capital growth of around 5% with the amortization, irrespective of what goes on. Now, prices as of today, they factored in a large part of the drop that's been anticipated. You have to trust me on that, but this is the case. So if you were to say that back in November, after Quasi had thrown his hand grenade in, they were saying, oh, well, prices are going to drop by 8 to 10 percent. I would say to you, 6 to 7 percent of that has already factored in now. So you might see a 1 or 2 percent drop. And there's an old adage in property, never try catching a falling knife. In other words, don't try second guessing where prices are going. I can tell you the fundamentals behind property in the right areas, such as Langford Tower, are not going to let you down. Um, so, you know, you, you, we've all seen this. I mean, the fact is you could all go and buy a stock um, and um, you're talking to somebody who got that wrong at times um, where you, you buy it one day thinking it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread. And then within a week, it's dropped 20 percent because it because it does. Well, property, we're not going to get that. You might get one or two percent down, but it's physical. You can touch it. You can feel it. You can smell it. You can walk around it. You can live in it. You can take the yield off of the property. It's, it, in my opinion, there's nothing like property as an investment. Thanks, uh, Pete. Um, I, mean, I, I touched on what you're traveling around, but I'd always like to bring up what, what we're looking at. Um, we're doing okay. a lot in London now. We're doing a lot in London now. Well, and um, all I'm great. saying to the wealth managers mm. is do reach out to us. And, mm. and in particular, it's not London, but Windsor. Pete, hey, perhaps you can give us a quick overview for those people who are looking um, at that type exclusivity of exclusivity on a wonderful site in Windsor now, which is just about to be launched. Um, and um, it's only 14 units, but it's physically built. It's complete the first week of March. How about that? So it's it's a it's an old-fashioned developer that's built it out and not forward marketed it. So we've got 14 units there and at a great price point. You can actually see Windsor Tower through the window. I've shown Chris the picture. It's stunning. Um, I'm in Guildford. Um, so I'm in Burke Hampstead tomorrow, uh, looking at a site in Burke Hampstead. For any of you that don't know, it's just to the side of Oxford. Um, I'm in Guildford early next week. Um, we've got a great site going to come on in Exeter. Um, and this is with um, a strategic partner that we're now working with. Um, so we, we're not just going to stick with the old Birmingham's and Manchester's because I believe we can get better value by looking at the likes of Sheffield and the likes of some of these other areas that are not, not been left behind, but have got they've got growth potential and also yield. So if you look at the average yields, for instance, in, um, in Sheffield, I've had a look, 7%. That's what you're looking at. That's the average yield. Now, because of the shortage of property, you're going to see rents go up. I would suggest to you somewhere between 8 and 10% this year. Wow. So wow. and that's, that's, that's big. That's a big number, Pete. That's yeah, a big and number. So, and and in, in, in our, we've got 102 apartments in a place called Centenary Quay. In the last 12 months, we put 14% on. So every time we get a void, we just stick another 75 quid on and it's gone in a heartbeat. You're going to get the same in Sheffield and everywhere else. There's no stock getting built. So Yeah, it, I mean, I think the same would apply. I mean, people are listening in, I hope, and taking notes. Uh, please do take notes. Uh, Brighton, another one, York. But to tell you what, I, a, poor, a poor friend, Darren, sitting there saying, why am I here? Darren, what's happened in the market this week? Loads of things are happening. So oh, we've good. actually Thanks got, um, 
<laughs> I can't really. <laughs> um, some of the rates have started coming down again. Um, there's been quite a bit of negativity about um, some valuations, but the good news now is um, when we do the due diligence to the mortgages with the lenders, we're actually finding out who they're using for their valuations. So we're now being able to pick and choose sometimes with these lenders who they're going to be using, which makes a massive difference to the, 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 the back end stuff. So um, it, it, we all know the property price is correct. It's not like the develop the developers done all their due diligence. We've done all of ours. We know the prices, but sometimes the, the surveyors get a little bit um, twitchy Excited. or the lenders get a bit twitchy. So, um, but the good news is we, we've just had, um, I've just had, some of the other the properties we've obviously we've got Excelsior Works at the moment. So we had one client got a little bit of down valuation. We replaced it with a different lender, and it got valued up okay. So it's just about playing a game with these lenders now. So we're getting into these lenders now. We're pushing back, which is great. The rates are coming down. The lenders have been a little bit more sensible with borrowing, which is brilliant. It's um it's really exciting. Really, exciting. Darren. Whenever you're on, and it is most weeks, and I love having you on and giving us your uh, forecast and information but people always come back to how do i get hold of darren can you type your coordinates at the bottom of the screen uh because um you know um, the other thing you know and i always like to bring this up um if people have got an existing portfolio and want to speak to darren see if they get a better yeah. deal then uh, reach out to him so thanks for that darren chloe you've been very very fresh and never so sorry but i'm gonna have to go so i'm gonna leave you in chloe's case right. thank you to thank run you, over Pete. the project all thanks. i would say to you is Please don't think that Sheffield is going to be hanging around very long. There were there were there were there was a situation again recently in Sheffield where we were trying to do a deal on it. It was sold out in two weeks. We didn't even conclude the negotiations. This project is not going to be hanging around. So please don't think, oh well, I'll come back in a month, two months, and it's going to be there. It won't be. So I'm just going to. And as a Pete, you get free knives and forks, don't you, when you buy Sheffield? <laughs> you, sure, <laughs> you certainly do. Right, thanks, right, Pete. Guys, that, I'm ever sorry if I've got a bolt, but um, oh, thanks for all that. Thanks, Pete. Chloe, Bye. Chloe it's Hello. your turn. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Um, so yeah, I obviously work for IP Global. For those of you who didn't know, um, and we have this new project in Sheffield, um, Langford Tower. So. I'll just sort of run you through the project a little bit on our view of the investment case. Um, and then I'm sure Chris will have a lot of lovely questions for me along no, the way. Nothing. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So um, that's just a couple of CGI. So I'm going to go through the brochure today. Um, obviously, I can send this out to everyone afterwards. Um, that's our thing. So yeah, Langford Tower. Um, it's going to be twenty-four stories, one hundred and sixty-nine apartments. And um, we've got studios, one beds, and two beds. Um, there is a lot of apartments, but as Pete says, that doesn't mean that they're going to be around forever. Um, it's very attractive price point, so they are going to sell quickly. Um, but yeah, I'll get into a few project specifics a little bit further down the line. Um, this is a CGI, um, we really like this one. So the bottom two floors of the development are actually going to be concierge space. So there's going to be a we work area, um, it's like a work from home um area, and then I guess this sort of relaxation. Uh, we're finding that that's becoming slightly more important these days as most people in the UK are still sort of hybrid working. A lot of people are working from home. Um, so it's just, I guess, an added value um, to be able to offer a space like this. Um, so, yeah, this is the location map. So as Pete mentioned earlier, it's a super central location. Um, so Langford's there, I think. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Yeah, we're yeah. on. So Langford Tower's here. Um, there's, as you can see from sort of the sites, there's all sorts of cafes, restaurants, transport links, um, everything that you would expect from a city centre location. Um, up the top there on number three, we have the she University of Sheffield campus and then sort of number five, 
number six, that's two buildings for Sheffield Hallam Uni. So Sheffield Hallam Uni isn't like a campus. It's a city based university. Um, and yeah, our development sort of slap bang in the middle of all of that stuff. Um, you can actually, I, I can share the link. There's a good Google Maps link where you can just sort of drop the pin and go for a, a walk around. And yeah, I'm sure you, you'll you see really quickly that it's um, a really sort of centrally located building. Chloe, what, what's the history of the building? It's obviously not a new build, it's a conversion or? No, kind of so it's, life? yeah, so it's a refurbishment. I actually do have some pictures, which I can maybe show after, but um, so it's, by the select group, um, which I think and there's some information there. Anyone who lives in Dubai, I'm sure will know of the select group. Um, they've built some really, really impressive buildings here, like Marina Gate. If you live in the Marina, I'm sure you'll know. Um, Studio One. So we know it's going to be to a, a high finish. Um, essentially, the select group bought this building um, as almost a distress sale um, years ago. I can't remember exactly how many years ago, but it was a good, I think, at least five years ago. Um, so they took the building for a really good price um, and they've just been renting it out ever since waiting for the right opportunity to do a good refurbishment um so this is also another reason why we was able to get such a competitive price on this building um as Pete sort of alluded to earlier you just can't build anything for this price at the moment the the cost of materials has gone up so much even just for a refurbishment um so yeah it it was kind of lucky for us to come across this scheme um so yeah the building is a refurbishment um we know it rented out really well beforehand so now with the sort of upgrade that it's getting um i'm sure the tenants will will come flooding in um so yeah thanks chloe and then, yeah so i think P obviously touched on this earlier. So when we're looking for any new project, there's fundamentals that you need within any sort of area or city that you're going to invest in. So these are just a few of the things that we think are super important. Um, you can see on the, the graph on the left, this is economic growth. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory that if it's going upwards, um, mm -hmm. We know that it's got good economic growth that's getting stronger. Um, it's actually doubled in size since the year 2000. And it's obviously expected to keep that sort of upward trend. Um, and then the graph that you can see on the right hand side, that shows sort of income and unemployment. Um, I'm sure it's not new to any of you that these are both fundamentals um, when looking for a new investment. So the sort of yellow line that you can see that's going down, that's unemployment. Um, so yeah, it was up at around 11% in 2010. And in 2020, it was just under 5%. So it sort of rapidly decreased in the last sort of 10 or so years. Um, and that's expected to to continue to go down. Um, and then the sort of bar chart, you can see the brown lines, that's household disposable income, um, which we always obviously want to go up because it means that tenants will be able to afford your rent, um, especially when you, you want to put the rents up, which in terms of an investment, that's what you want to do. Um, it also, Sheffield has one of the fastest growing upper income brackets in the whole of the UK, which essentially means that people are getting paid a lot more than they once were. So again, it gives a good profile for the type of tenant that you'll be getting in that development. Um, also, also, of course, rings true, Chloe, that um, as you say, the brown, you know, the brown lines up there, disposable income. Uh, means that when somebody wants to dispose of the asset, then again, there's going to be a ready market for people to to pick them up. 
and buy them. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good exit. And a lot of the time it does happen where, you know, a tenant's happy. And then when you want to exit, your tenant might want to buy it from you. Um, so yeah, you always want there to be an exit at the end, particularly if there is some strong capital growth. Um, so yeah. And then this sort of brings me on to education and employment, all of that sort of area. Um, so I guess why there is people are getting paid more. Um, so these are just some of the key industries that are in Sheffield at the moment um, and employ a lot of people. Um, advanced manufacturing, automotive, logistics, aerospace. You can see that they're really sort of high skilled jobs, um, which ultimately is resulting in those higher salaries. These are just a few sort of, I guess, familiar household names that you're all, I guess, aware of or have probably heard of before. McLaren, Rolls-Royce, HSBC, Boeing. Um, Collectively, between those companies, they've actually invested over 250 million into Sheffield, um, which sort of, I guess, gives you a bit of security that these companies are wanting to invest into the area as well. They obviously believe in the area, the investment case, um, the type of people that they can employ. Um, and yeah, HSBC actually employ more people in Sheffield than they do in Birmingham. So that sort of gives you, because I'm sure that a lot of you know about Birmingham um, and the employment there. So that sort of gives you a good idea of, of the vast amount of people that they are employing. Um, and I guess why? So why are these companies coming into this area? Um, and I think a big reason for that is education and the universities that are there. So as Pete said earlier, there's the University of Sheffield and Sheffield Hallam University. The University of Sheffield is actually in the top 100 unis in the whole world. And it's a Russell Group uni. So some of you who've been to uni more recently might be familiar with what a Russell Group is. Um, but if not, it's essentially a university where its research is ranked as world leading, um, internationally recognised. It's essentially just one of the best unis um, that you can get. Um, and as a result of that, it attracts a really high number of international students. Um, you can see from the sheet there, 31% international in the University of Sheffield and 13% in Sheffield Hallam. So all both of those unis are within a 10, 15 minute walk of our development. Um, and essentially, I guess these major companies are wanting to come into Sheffield just to take advantage of the young professionals, the highly skilled professionals that are coming out of these universities and choosing to stay in Sheffield. Um, and it's these sort of young professionals that you want in a city that you're investing when it comes to, you know, apartments, studios, one beds, because um, that's the type of tenant that's that's going to be renting off you, essentially. Um, so, yeah, that was, did you have any questions on education or? No, I... Um, no, I think, you know, mm -hmm. the thing about re uh, retention, it comes up near, nearly every week on our webinars, Property Thursday. Um, it, it, there's so many people years ago went to university wherever it was and then would go straight back down to where they came from or back to London but the retention rates are now so big whether it be Manchester or Sheffield or Birmingham people are staying there um I mean I'm, I'm not going to mention HS2 because we do it every week <laughs> that's the infrastructure that's going on no really interesting Clay what's the next slide yeah so I have a bit on transport um I'm, I'm not going to bore you all with transport for a while, but um, just a couple of things to note. The tram network is one of the most impressive in the whole of the UK. I think it's the most used tram, tram um, network. Um, so it's really accessible. You can get around really easily in Sheffield without necessarily needing a car. 
Um, and in terms of the actual train, so you can get into London in just over two hours. You can get into Manchester in just under an hour. Um, and the main train station is about a 10, 15 minute walk from um, the development. So it's really well connected. Um, Sheffield, you can kind of see that from there. Um, but yeah, that's probably all that we need I know to that I, I know that Will was particularly proud of getting this uh, Sheffield. And uh, in actual fact, it's on the website already. And we've already sold a few, which is great. Um, yeah. But yeah, you did really well to pick this one up. Uh, Will worked hard to get it, so um, really good to have it have it available. Sheffield housing market. Oh, some more slides. You do like a slide. Yeah, this is the last one in terms of data okay. because I know it gets a little bit much and boring. And obviously, I'll send this out to everyone so you can read through it. But this is just, I guess, the final fundamental of what we look for in a city. It's got a vastly growing population. Um, I think it's increased by about 16% since 2001. Um, and it's the fifth most popular city in the whole of the UK. I think I think my knowledge is correct there. Um, but yeah, the, the growth, the graph on the right is a really important one, actually, that reflects supply and demand, but also how well the council are doing with living up to this supply and demand so you can see the yellowy sort of bit at the bottom of the graph this is the supply and how much they are actually building and the rest of the brown graph is how much they need so this is the deficit here um and the way that we do these graphs is if we we map it so that if they was to build what they're expecting to build over the next sort of 10 or so years given that they haven't actually done that for the last 10 years they haven't built what they've said they will but even if they do you can see that there's still like a 15,000 unit deficit in Sheffield um they're just simply not keeping up with the demand which means that there's always going to be capital appreciation. You're always going to find tenants and the rent's always going to increase. So, um, yeah, it's just a quite an important graph to understand why it's a good investment, I guess. Um, so, yeah, that's that. And then I guess we can just talk a little bit about the, the actual project. Unless... No, um, I tell you what, people are uh, asking questions. Chris, prices? So I thought yeah. I'd just jump in then. So yeah, That's um, what I call the meat and potatoes. But yeah, thank you. Yeah. So we have, as mentioned, studios, one beds, and two beds. You can see from the breakdown here, um, it's mostly one bedrooms, um, but we do have some studios and two beds. Um, the studios are starting from one hundred and forty-two thousand five hundred. The one beds are starting from 152,500 and the two beds are starting from 249,950. Um, so they're the different prices for the starting points. Yields, we're very conservative with our yields. We've said up to 6%, um, but it's highly likely that by the time the the building's finished and we are renting them out that it could be higher than that um completion so where it is a renovation um it's obviously not going to take too long so completion is expected sort of mid q1 next year um so yeah mid q1 2024 um 20 on exchange balance on completion um yeah reservation fee reservation fee right 2500 can you can you move off that uh, that slide now because otherwise darren's going to start phoning me yeah so i just <laughs> thought it would be um, a good idea to actually show you some of the the layouts as well because 
I think sometimes people shy away from studios a little bit, but these are really, really great layout studios. Um, as you can see, the bedroom and the living area are actually very separate, um, but there's just not a door. So that's essentially why it's called a studio. Um, I don't want to yeah. throw you under the bus, uh, Chloe, but uh, idea on square footage, which is probably another question that uh, Darren's thinking. Yeah, so the square footage um, as a whole ranges from about 375 square foot, um, which obviously would be some of the studios. And then I think the two beds go up to about 850 square foot. Um, so that's the full range. I would have to get a breakdown of you know no, the only reason i ask and i'm asking on behalf of darren uh, and i know no, darren fine. knows the project because it used to have a different name um is on the mortgage mortgageability side of things so oh, i was yeah. just clearing that up uh, darren you yeah. might want to jump in with your thoughts there actually uh on the studios of that size yeah so i've just um, i've just done a calculation so 375 square foot is about 34.8 square meters which is Okay, for some lenders, some like it to be th at least 35. So I'm sure we can probably get to 35 square meters somehow yeah. by jig jiggling a jiggling a bed or a coffee table around or whatever. So yeah, I think <laughs> um, as well fun. with the um the studios, I think there is only like two or three of that size, and some of them are slightly bigger. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm sure there's something we could do oh um, I, think, I think it's a great layout by the way chloe i'm looking yeah, at it, it now i mean that is you know i always think of a studio is that you're lying on your bed and you can lean over and put the kettle on and grab um, something that, that's the quite good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no special. i agree and that's is why that, I, is I, that, they all got balconies or, or is it just that one yeah yeah so this is the studio um this there's quite a lot of different layouts for the one beds um, but yeah, I can just take you through a couple of them here. Um, and then Chloe, just just uh, they've all, I can every all the slides you showed so far have got balconies. Is that across the the whole development? Yes, yeah, oh. they've all got balconies. And it's always sunny in uh, Sheffield, apparently. Doesn't exactly. Rain. <laughs> some rain a bit like Even Dubai. in December. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, I interrupted. No, no, it's fine. But yeah, I was just showing you a few of the um, layouts there. And then, yeah, it's obviously a tall, a tall building. It's got great views over the city, um, which you can see from the balcony. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there's probably too much for me to add. I know I've been rambling on for a bit now. Chloe, um, it's okay. A question's just come in. It might have been covered yeah. earlier on by Pete. And again, not trying to throw you under the bus, but a question's come no, in fine. by somebody called Anonymous. Um, a capital appreciation expected per annum on this property. I'm not sure per annum, but I think the, the five-year price growth prediction is about 12%. Okay. So, you know. Uh, Kieran's raised her hand, but hasn't. I don't know what that means. So she's raised her hand. Hi, Kieran. So many regulars on this show. So you get more listeners, by the way, than Graham Norton. <laughs> um, Anything else, one, Darren, just, from your side? Yeah, go on. Yeah, Sorry. just one thing. I've, um, and what Chloe mentioned, obviously, 20% on exchange, 80% on completion. Just to mm -hmm. reiterate <laughs> that 20% um, is the exchange figure. 80% doesn't mean you're going to be able to get an 80% mortgage on these units. It will be the remaining bit of your deposit plus the mortgage now we've done some due diligence like chris has already said because it was called something completely different before this launch so we've done all the due diligence we've got about five or six lenders that do this ranging from 55 percent loan to value up, up to about 70 percent. so the the remaining deposit will be obviously on top of the mortgage you're able to get so just um just be cautious that you're not going to be able to get an 80% mortgage. I don't I want think to be we, negative. Um, yeah, we have to say that every sure week, Darren. Really yeah, just to remind yeah. people. Exactly. Yeah, we, exactly. have, um, we have cash flows as well that I can create or send over for you based yeah. on um, those sure. numbers that Darren just sure. said. So sure. if anyone uh, needs... Kieran, <laughs> Kieran's asked a question. Um, unfortunately, her cat is sitting on her keyboard and therefore she missed the floor floor plans. I don't know if yeah. this, Clary, you can just zoom back. I <laughs> You can send yeah, the question to Kieran anyway, but um, yeah, her why, and her cat. Why Chloe's doing that? Just um, it's always a, it's always important to get at least an idea of 
what the lending options are going to be with the mortgages. Um, and this is really relevant for, for all the guys, all the wealth managers, Chloe and our team, is when a cash flow comes out, if you're get, second guessing the interest rate um, on the mortgage and then we come in and tell you the interest rate's slightly completely different and it makes a little bit, of, um, it can be a little bit uh, daunting, if you like, when somebody's yeah. quoting a lower interest rate and then due to circumstances, client situation, where they are in the world, their income, so everything really, then we come back and say it's going to be two, three percent more than um, it, it sometimes as a client, you can uh, you can have second debt, second doubt. So it's always best to get lending options done early doors. I know the, um, the development's not completing until, like you said, the beginning of next year. So even now, ask, ask me the question, ask me the question, do I fit with this? Do, does it work with the mortgage? Does does my deposit work? So get all that information done early doors. And like Chris keeps on saying, every single week, early you get a decision of principle and agreement from the lender, the better. It's valid for 12 months. So doesn't mean um, we're going to go with that lender when you've actually, we're ready to submit the AFL application, but it gives you confidence knowing you as the client can actually um, obtain the mortgage in the first place and you have an idea of what the rates are going to be. Okay, I've got a great question from Wacker. Um, who's saying um, living in Pakistan? What's the process and instalment plan? Um, we just went through that. This is being recorded, but um, obviously you get hold of us. You get hold of your wealth manager, Wacker, and then you uh, they get you in touch with uh, uh, Chloe. Um, but the uh, process and instalment plan: two and a half thousand pound to reserve. That takes it off the market. That's yours. Then you obviously speaking to Darren, um, and then to exchange contracts, which usually takes about five, six weeks at the moment. Chloe, am I about right? Five, six weeks? Yeah. yeah. And then you pay is... your 20%. Um, and then um, the rest is on completion, as we said. Um, thank you very much, uh, Wacky. You've just sent me your uh, phone number. So I'm going to WhatsApp you straight after <laughs> this, and then um, we can take it take it from there. But it's a great question, and thanks for, thanks for joining us in Pakistan. Sorry, there we are. That's just a, I just like to show people that there are people all over the world watching this show. <laughs> Anything yeah. else from anybody? Uh, let me just check. Also, sure I was that... just going to say, um, Karen, I can send you, I'll email you over these floor plans yeah. as well. So you can have a look. Thank you. Um, right. Well, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, Chloe, come on. I always do this to whichever guest is on the show. You've got Berlin, you've got other projects. Just give us a quick, 30 second quick burst of what you've got seconds. out there. Quick 30 okay. seconds. Try and do it so, in, a, in a London accent. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so in the UK, we've got York, we've got Sheffield, Manchester, we have Birmingham. We're about to do something in Edinburgh. So if anyone has anyone for Edinburgh, um, that's an exciting new market for us. And yeah, we're also active in Germany, as Chris said. We have a couple of schemes in Leipzig at the moment, and we are also about to launch something in Berlin. So come and talk to us if you've got anyone interested in those sort of regions. Is that great. quick enough? Sorry, I'm just, uh, yeah, that's pretty, I'm just actually reaching around trying to get some paper and a pen so I can write Wacker's telephone number down. So, uh, yeah, sorry mm -hmm. if I look distracted. Um, no, I can do okay. that and write. That's great. So, Darren, thank you very much indeed. Everybody that's on, thank you very much. Holbornpropertyinvestments.com is where you can find this webinar, all the details of Sheffield and other developments we got at at, uh, at Holborn so thank you everybody I can see you're all dozing off now so thank you uh, Chloe fantastic have you on for the first time Darren yeah, thanks always for having good. me thank you, Chloe. thank you Chris thank you and thanks also to people holding the strings at Holborn Marketing thank you very much now I'm going to desperately try and write this number down so thank you very much bye thank you so much thank you everybody thank you